Rick Smith is Axon Enterprise CEO, founder, joins us this morning. They're launching a new autonomous drone program that will enable departments to view live streamed footage. Rick, thanks for joining us. Good to see you. Yeah, thanks for having me on today. I know maybe it's not policy to comment on pending contracts, but can you discuss uh, Kenosha at all? Uh, there's there's really not much uh, that I could talk about. We don't currently have a contract with them. Uh, and obviously we're watching with, uh, like most Americans, uh, the tragedy unfolding there. I wonder what you make of um, the pressure from the public or certain parts of the public, certainly, to have police activity documented more thoroughly with body cameras and, and maybe drones uh, versus the budget shortfalls and the pressure that we're going to see tons of cities come under uh, in the coming years. Yeah, when we went through this back in 2008, uh, there was also tremendous budget pressure. Uh, and I think one of the ways that law enforcement had to respond was to use technology better to go after some of the inefficiencies in the process. And when you think about that, a police officer spends about 50 percent of his or her day uh, documenting, writing up reports, uh, there's tremendous efficiencies that can be gained. And we're starting to see that with uh, body cameras playing a role in not only documenting cases so that you can know what happened in a critical incident, but you can also help more rapidly create the case information for all the everyday cases. And that efficiency uh, typically will more than pay for itself. Rick, how widespread is, is the use of body cameras in police departments across this country right now? What, what percentage of police members actually use them? Uh, I would say body cameras are more prominent and more prevalent in the big cities. So probably around 80% of the larger cities have body cameras. Uh, when you get down into mid-sized cities, they're a little less prevalent. Uh, and I think that just tends to be that larger cities, uh, you know, tend to have more of a focus on, uh, you know, the issues around police accountability than smaller towns. But as we just saw, these, uh, these sorts of things can happen anywhere. And, and I think we're going to see a continued movement even from the smaller cities. How do you explain or, or describe the acceptance from the rank and file? I mean, if you are a, uh, a beat policeman on the street, is this something that you want on you for protection later on or maybe to make your documentation easier? Or is there still a sense that uh, you've got Big Brother following you around on your job no matter where you go? Well, there's a saying in policing that no one hates a bad cop more than a good cop because it really sullies the reputation of everyone who uh, wears a badge. So what we find is officers are uh, concerned about wearing a body camera if they've never done it before. It's a big change. But after about two months of wearing one, most officers will refuse to go on patrol without one because they get, once they understand and they actually experience, hey, if I do everything right, this is going to protect me. And there are a lot of false claims that happen in law enforcement. Look, there's also times officers cross the line and body cameras uh, at least can bring an impartial you know, truth, so to speak, about what happened in these incidents. So we find officers overwhelmingly support them after they've had a chance to wear them for a while. What's your demand been like, Rick? For instance, in the wake of the George Floyd, obviously horrific video that, that we all saw, which raised awareness for things like police wearing body cameras, what have you seen in terms of orders? Uh, it's, it's actually been fairly consistent. Uh, law enforcement, we have to remember, our agencies of, of city government, they tend to have rather lengthy uh, procurement cycles and city processes to go through. So we're definitely seeing strong demand from the public and strong demand from law enforcement in general. But it's, it's not like uh, these aren't impulse purchases that, that happen immediately. We do think that uh, this is really cementing that body cameras are going to be here for the long haul. And I think in the next few years, they will be a standard issue as a gun and a baton. Hey, finally, Rick, on drones, um, any complicated, we've been talking about drone technology for years, uh, mostly in retail delivery, for example. But, I mean, how complicated is the low altitude air traffic control uh, situation as municipalities get used to things that I guess at that altitude they've never really had to think about? Yeah, that's actually uh, one reason our announcement today is so exciting. We partnered with a company called Photokite that has a tethered drone that can operate completely autonomously because it is attached to a patrol car. Literally, you can just push a button and the drone flies itself 
because it's tethered to the vehicle, it's actually not considered an aircraft. It's considered like an extendable ladder with a camera on it effectively from a legal perspective, hmm. which means you're able to get eyes over a scene in a matter of seconds. It can be operated by a remote dispatcher, whereas uh, traditional drones, you have to have a dedicated pilot on scene who is flying the drone. Uh, this autonomous technology, I think, is going to be a real breakthrough that it will give law enforcement the ability to have eyes over the scene from anywhere without all the complications of, as you talk about, air traffic control and the FAA and all those legal issues that make it much more challenging with pre-flying drones. All right, that's fascinating. Um, we'll have you back to talk more about, I mean, I'm sure pricing is a whole other story uh, and uh, the degree to which that maybe comes down over time, but we'll leave it there for now, Rick. Thanks so much. Uh, Rick Smith awesome. is the uh, CEO of Vaccine Enterprise.